For the longest time, I've been wanting to make a video like this, and thanks to all the support and all the subscribers, I finally get a chance to do so. So guys, thank you again for subscribing and leaving comments and hitting the thumbs up button. Alright guys, so today I'm going to co finally cover the uh, tier list from uh, for Idol Heroes, PvP, um, the meta tier list from JJR4G. Um, shout out to him and his great work. It's been such a, a good guideline for a lot of players. And I do have a couple disclaimers before I start talking about today's video. So, the first disclaimer is that this is purely from my experience in my server group as well as doing a couple hundreds of tests and trials and um, doing PvP battles. I own most of the heroes that I'm going to talk about today. And um, also the second disclaimer is that the tier list, the meta list, is for the high end game players but it's also good for early as well as beginners and mid game players. Those are key words there. Um, the, the reason why is that as you guys do these events and get the rewards, you want to keep them around and not make the mistake that I did when I was new and use them as fodder. Alright guys, that's why he spends a lot of time making these um, tier lists and currently it's not really updated and that's why I'm going to give my feedback um, on the meta list as well. So today I'm only going to cover the fortress faction so let's go directly into it as you saw from the top left corner um, you did see my bias or former bias my favorite hero in the game used to be Emily anyways we're gonna talk about it later but and before I begin I do want to talk about um, me not really having any loyalty to any hero in this game because I guess I've you know incorp or learned that or incorporated that or got that habit from playing big MMOs. I used to always switch characters and heroes and specs as well as traits and roles. So I'm not really loyal to any of these heroes. And there are some players out there that really cling on to some of the heroes. And you know, that is their opinion and that is their way of playing the game. I respect that. But this is from my opinion, guys, again. All right, so let's go in. The first hero that I want to talk about is the newest addition to the Fortress faction. It is Valentino. All right. So according to JJR4G's um, tier list, right, he's considered a god tier, and I do agree. He is pretty much the best hero in the Fortress Pack faction in terms of PvP right now. Because right there, boom, his speed, right? 1185 and buffed. That is great speed, as fastest hero in the game, except for light and dark, of course. So he's gonna be going faster than Demon Hunter, and speed is pretty much like the thing that you need right now. The reason why the warrior meta is falling off and King Barton, even though he is a great hero and even though of course Steven did get buffed, the reason warriors like Asmodo and all of them heroes are not viable right now in the end game is because of their speed and their toolkit as well, right? They don't really have a lot of um, things that they bring to the table in terms of the rest of the lineup. Anyways, so let's dive in, right? The thing that I really like about this hero is Overload, right? Um, from playing um, like games like World of Warcraft or Diablo 3, I'm always, um, I always love heroes that give support. Not just in terms of healing or, you know, like a tank. I do love heroes that bring buffs, debuffs, you know, additional damage, cleanses, things like that. I really value those heroes. So Valentino is one of those heroes that are very unique because he brings a group wide buff and in the current meta this is such a beautiful passive because of all the energy artifacts rolling around due, due to pay to win events as well as just regular events where these um for especially these treasure box events that are reoccurring this year it's really helped players to obtain magic sources for example i got two myself and they've really helped me um for newer players of course um this passive is not going to be that detrimental, but for players and on and uh, higher end servers or older ancient servers with, you know, ener energy artifacts rolling everywhere, they're going to see the full benefit of this passive. So what this passive does is that as your heroes that are fast and the current meta heroes like you know, um, DA, less, less um, and other heroes like Valentino himself, Faithblade, as well as Michelle, any heroes that are fast with CC. They're going to benefit from this as well 
because they're going to get their actives off before Demon Hunter will. And anything below Demon Hunter, I really don't value them that much because of their speed. We want to talk about that later. Anyways, so it's um, even though Faith Blade does um, do his active in round one, and even though he may not be CCing because he does have high health, I talked about this, while his base stat looks low with the Assassin's Armor, um, he does have a high amount of health, especially with the auras like GVE and Rainbow Aura. So he usually doesn't get a stun off, but thanks to Overload, he's able to, and other heroes are able to as well with their actives. So it is at a chance to CC as well as damage. So the way Overload works is that it activates when heroes do their actives, as well as it ticks at the end of the round. It's, it's just a beautiful talent. And in terms of his active, his active has CC. In average, I see about one, one to three targets CC'd, one guaranteed, of course, if you read the talents. And you don't really pick him for damage, but you could build him for damage because of his passive crit, right? Um, if you have multiple Valentinos, like my team does, um, you could do that as well. But generally, if you have one copy at 10 star, you want to build his um, speed with an energy artifact, guys. You could put him in slot one, back slot, it doesn't matter. I mean, he has the, the modern passive of damage reduction it, it activates when he's below 80 percent health instead of 30 percent or 50 percent which is way too slow to activate in the current meta because of all the burst all right so this is pretty good passive as well overall i'm very satisfied with the hero aesthetically and <laughs> he's not bad as well anyways let's go to the next hero so from here and on out i really don't consider any other heroes in the fortress faction as end game meta in the pvp list all right, so Emily, she's definitely one of my favorite heroes in the game, but she has fallen off, unfortunately, because, and I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, but that's just how it is. Emily, I have as 10 star. She was one of the, um, I had the first Emily on my server. She served me so well. I'm going to include pictures in this video of why she did back in the days of Dodge. Um, basically, her active back in the day would reduce hit of the enemy team, right? the entire enemy team when she does her active it will lower everyone's hit by 20 percent basically um, taking away all the hit that the enemy team had from guild talents and it would guild tech so it was just awesome it incorporate uh, it would just steal the hit as well as um giving uh if you ran emily with rosa like i did back in the day rosa slot one um i i would just ha i stacked dodge on him with dodge stone and Basically, my Rosa had at least 56% dodge, right? And then with the snake pet, I had even 10% more. So that was like over 65%. As well as, um, I mean, it doesn't work that way, but I would add the Emily hit reduction. So it would be like upper 80% to dodge. It was insane for Rosa, as well as the rest of the team. But the way she worked was that she removed the hit. It was just amazing. I would see like... Of course, newer heroes have cannot be dodged or used to, like Faithly, Armorvor, and all the stuff, but um, the older heroes like Ice Blink and Demon Hunter did not have that on their actives, so you would see, I would often see my entire teammates of Rangers and Priests, because of their guild tech, just dodge actives from Demon Hunters and Ice Blink as well. Not just one or two, but I would dodge all of them, as well as crews, I could dodge all their weaken. It was just beautiful back in the day. But with the introduction of faster heroes like Valentino, um, we have also Cruz as well as um, Jara, and we have other additions like Faithblade Armivore, of course. Um, she, her speed is just not enough to kick in her active. So what I mean by that is that when she does her active, she increases the party's attack by 20% as well as speed increased precision these look like on paper on paper they're amazing right back in the day when she was one of the fastest heroes in the game because of the way guild tech used to work back then when priests used to have only speed in their guild tech now it's um, baseline for all um all classes but back in the day it was usually just priests so they were so fast and when emily was fast and she was able to use her active in round one with an energy artifact she would boost the rest of her teammates and when the rest of her teammates did her their actives in round one and two, they would see the full benefit of Emily. But now it's reversed. Now in the current meta, she would do her active um, at the e towards the end of round one for your team, right? In the high end meta, because your heroes like your CC heroes like Valentino, DH, DA, 
Faith Blade, they're all Michelle, they're all faster, right? So basically, um, she needs to not get CC'd because of her speed, and when she does do her active in round one or two, it's basically for um, your heroes in round two, right? But by then, it's pretty much a decided game at this current meta of burst CC. So that's why, um, while on paper, her active looks amazing, and it is amazing for newer players, and it is good for PvE and towers. It helped me get to 500 um, level 500 in towers within a matter of a week. Um, in terms of PvP in the current endgame setup right now, it just doesn't have a place like I explained. Now, the, she was recently buffed to make her um, stay viable, but um, the devs, I don't really know what they're doing. They're like, it's not really a fluent, congruent, fluid hero right now. Like, for example, um, her basic attack reduces the crit of three random enemies by 20%, so she kind of acts like a queen, but then it's based off her basic attack. Um, if you ever fought against queen in the endgame meta, like the, the crit damage and the crit reduction is not enough for the current meta's burst. Like Skurai would just still burst through it, Faith Blade, because of the people just stacking crit stones with crit artifacts or, um, you know, having um, crit passives. It's just not enough. And she needs to use her basics to do that. So basically, in round one, if she doesn't have an energy artifact or she's silent, she's going to reduce um, enemy three random enemy by 20% and it's just not enough it just doesn't really work well in the current meta all right and her last passive again on paper it sounds amazing right well below 50% she triggers armor and attack and yeah in terms of PvE I use this um, I strip all her gear <laughs> and then um, this would activate and in towers my Skurai would just do like two to three million or even five million to everybody wipe out the entire map or level in round two but in terms of pvp first of all um i, I often see priests getting just shot down from 100 to zero or 60 to zero or 80 to zero nowadays so i don't really see this see this passive get off that easily and if she did right it's just like added the added damage for your team. It's just not enough right now. Like back in the day when the meta was like Justice Aura, Redemption Aura, and before the introduction of Faith Blade Armivore, when heroes needed the extra damage because rounds were lasting 13 to 15 rounds, yeah, the added damage would really tip the fight in your favor and it would end the fight. But then currently, it's just overkill, right? It's just for e so that you could take a snapshot and show your friends how much damage you did. But it's just an overkill, guys. Like, your Skurai, Armor 4, um, Faith Blade, they're gonna kill regardless. Even DA, like, if DA is taking enough damage and draw the, um, the last pass of the dice on that, he can just, like, literally wipe out the entire teammates. Like, so, you don't, like, I don't really see Emily in the battlefield or in the, um, in the TOC or FTA, when I do, they're oftentimes just under CC because she's too slow. There's plenty of clips that I have in my channel for that. If you want to watch that, um, you could just um, see in my other videos. I have tons of those. Anyways, um, while this does again sound uh, good on paper, it's just overkill at the current moment in the endgame PvP because there's just enough. Ar there's already enough damage, right? From there's enough burst to just one shot, two shot heroes right now. That is Moog. Can even do a DA, of course, Faith Blade, Armor Vore, even lesser to extent of Asmodo, and of course, Skurai. There's plenty of heroes that can do just that without her help. Anyways, that's my review of Emily. So let's go back to the uh, Fortress Faction. I want to do a manual, um, honorable mention of Odeo 1, right? When the Priest meta was rising and the introduction of, introduction of Cruz, um, he was pretty good, right? Because he had this bug. It's in my um, Reddit post. If you look at my post history, um, JJR4G also mentioned this, that there was a little secret thing that not many people, players knew, that when he did his active, right, he was he had 100% chance to um, stun priests for two rounds. But if he was able to get those priests below 50%, so 80 to, 50, 80 to 40 or 100 to 40, or, you know, um, get them below 50% with his active, they're 50% passive like Vesa Silence, um, Emily Attack Armor Buff, Rosa's Armor Buff back in the day, 
um, crew's 75% um, stun to the enemy team would not trigger. This was a very beautiful way to counter crews as, as well as other priests like um, Vesa's Silence, right? It was a very cheap way to do it, but it's been fixed. I posted when it was fixed and it got some publicity. People started noticing that their ODO one got nerfed. He's still great for PvE and, and early game in terms of PvP as well. But in the high-end arena, again, due to his speed, he just does not have a place. And I have tons of video of him not getting his active off due to his speed. He's just way too slow right now. All right, so let's go to other heroes like Mickey. Mickey was a very good hero about six to eight months ago because of the dodge, right? He, she would the, the way dodge worked was that if um, most of the heroes back then really didn't attack the backline except for like assassins like Walter and Bloodblade, and um, they had to go through the um, the the front line. So when Mickey dodged, the enemy would not gain energy, right? So she was really really good, and she would wrap up damage over time. Um, during those 13 to 15 rounds, but now she's been overhauled. She's been changed to having 100% block or tons of block and She's pretty much like fallen off completely unless she's changed and honorable mention to Mirage as well He was like a cheaper version of Mickey back then the full fortress aura with the dodge was pretty good But now he's pretty much fallen off as well um, Ormus so Ormus is the slowest hero in the game right look at his speed um, him and Gurk is the slowest here in the game, but Gurk has a um, way of turning around the fight by wrapping up damage as he keeps taking hits, but Ormus really doesn't, right? And the heal is based off his um, active, and right now healing is not enough because of the burst on the CC meta. So being that he is too slow, and being that um, uh, the, the, the the domination, <laughs> the dominance of CC and burst, he just does not sadly have a place right now in the high end. All right, so um, Flame Strike and Sigmund, of course, early game, they're amazing. My first 10 strike, uh, 10 star, not 10, not 10 strike, but 10 star on my other monthly card account was Flame Strike, and she was able to just um, wreck havoc, right? If she's your first 10 star, it's, it's gonna be you're gonna be having fun. She you, she's gonna be ramping up so much damage. You slap on some damage reduction on her, like fearless armor, and she'll go to town, right? She's also great for TLC in the um, early game. As your allies die, you could do like a cheese where you have like a five star Emily or a low star Emily and Rosa, and if they just die and give her the 50% buff, she's able to just full clear a map. And she has a role in that perspective, but in the high end, she doesn't. Same thing with Sigmund. Sigmund used to have a uh, place in the meta back in the Justice Aura eight months ago, six months ago when the Warrior meta was strong. But the introduction of Course Demon and the changing of the meta into CC Burst and Speed Heroes, Sigmund doesn't really have a place. One, because he's easy to see, he is easy to CC, and when he CC'd, he does not do his passive or counterattack, and he's not able to lower armor fast enough over time. Why? Because he is a damage ramp up hero, and currently. We need heroes that do burst, all right? So, Sigmund, very good early game in terms of PvP. Of course, PvE, he's a superstar, but in the high end, he has fallen off, sadly. All right, so that's it for today. That's it for the Fortress Faction. Um, once again, Valentino is a must-have. Um, Ice Blink, he has fallen off. I made a post about this. It's got a lot of um, um, good publicity, and the reason why he's fallen off is due to his speed as well as his passive right here. It's it's like, you know, Sigmund, it, it needs time to ramp up, right? It needs, you know, to go into like round three and four and five and six, and he needs to be slot one, but not a lot of end game heroes right now are targeting slot one. Um, so if you put him in the back line, he's easy to CC with Kamath. So he has, and, and Kamath does do extra damage to Fortress heroes. So there's a lot of, you know, cons to Ice Blink. Um, the pro is that he's easy to build, for the early game and he'll serve you well but in terms of high-end pvp he's clearly fallen off and people who are holding on to him is because they don't have the copies of valentino all right all right guys so that's it for today um if you like the video please hit the thumbs up i do want to keep it short tomorrow i'm going to discuss another faction um if you agree or disagree that's fine um this is just my perspective once again if you like the video please hit subscribe and thank you so much guys i'll see you guys tomorrow